Is your family tree filled with diverse characters and personalities? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. One of the most imposing landmarks when you visit New York City is the Rockefeller Center, composed of 19 high-rises built on 22 acres of prime Manhattan estate. It was built in 1930 by John D. Rockefeller and was instrumental in bringing New York City out of the Great Depression as it employed 40,000 people for construction work. He is considered the richest American in history. At today's prices, his net worth is $400 billion three times more than Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, the multinational American technology company. The Rockefeller family is considered to be one of the most philanthropic families in the world, helping humanity globally in issues like economics, religion, education, and environmental affairs. Yet the Rockefeller family tree is filled with many skeletons. William Avery Rockefeller, Big Bill, was a con man, womanizer, and a thief of a traveling salesman. He advertised himself as a celebrated cancer specialist and hawked herbal remedies and other bottled medicine charging $25 a bottle, a sum the equivalent of two months' wages. He often posed as, as, as deaf and dumb as he scammed others. He fled from a number of indictments for horse stealing, eventually living under an assumed name. He married Eliza Davison in 1837 and shortly thereafter brought Nancy Brown home as a housekeeper who became an alternate lover and who also bore his children. As the saying goes, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. His son John D. Rockefeller was proclaimed to be the most ruthless American, selling bootleg liquor to federal troops at a high profit which gained him the initial capital to embark into oil. In 1870, he and others incorporated their petroleum holdings into the Standard Oil Company Ohio and then either bought out his competitors or drove them out of business. By 1881, he had a near monopoly of the petroleum industry in the United States. By 1897, he had turned his interests toward philanthropy, funding the Baptist Church, the YMCA, and founding and endowing the University of Chicago with more than $80 million. He endowed major philanthropic institutions and finally established the Rockefeller Foundation to promote public health and to further the medical, natural, and social sciences. Maybe there are skeletons in your closet too, embarrassing family members with a checkered past who have missed the mark in God's eyes. The story of the Rockefellers remind us that everyone has skeletons in their closets, but while some may have fallen short of God's will for their lives, no one is beyond redemption. We greet today our Blessed Virgin Mary a happy birthday. And today's Gospel reading from Matthew traces Jesus' genealogy that begins with Abraham, the father of God's people, and is divided into three sets of 14 generations, 52 in total. When this passage, or that of looks, is read during the traditional Christmas Simbangabi or night-slash-dawn mass, it is for certain that many people sleep through it. Why? If we scrutinize the names, many of them are alien to us. But there are notable moral failures there too. Abraham himself lied about Sarah to escape death from the Egyptians. Isaac did too about his wife Rebekah to escape death. Jacob deceived his father Isaac by pretending to be Esau, his older brother. Judah was a fornicator and had sex with his daughter-in-law Tamar. David was an adulterer and Solomon was a polygamist. Manasseh was considered the most evil king Israel ever had. But Jesus emerged from this family tree of sinners. We reflect on three things. First, from evil, God can bring out good. For instance, Rahab, part of Jesus' genealogy, was a prostitute, but she was the one who hid two spies sent by Joshua from Israel who reconnoitered the promised land before Jericho was destroyed. 
an idolater and adulterer like Solomon consolidated the fractured empire of David and built the great temple of Jerusalem. The fourth busiest airport in the world is the O'Hare Airport of Chicago. It was named after Butch O'Hare, a World War II hero, awarded the Medal of Honor for single-handedly shooting down five Japanese planes in one day at the Battle of Coral Sea. His father was Eddie O'Hare, a businessman who was associated with Al Capone, the most infamous gangster in American history. Eventually, Eddie became tired of working with thugs and wanted to become a good example to his young son. The Internal Revenue Service solicited his help to convict Capone. Eddie was killed by a shotgun blast shortly thereafter. Second, God works through people who are not part of the Christian faith. Ruth, a Moabite, married into an Israelite family and became the grandmother of King David. I remember Father Augustine, one of our translators in the Christian Life program we conducted in Mandalay, Myanmar, sometime in 2011. His mother was a Muslim. She could not get pregnant for a long time. One day, she was led to a Catholic church and she saw a vision of the Blessed Mother who promised her a son. Because of this, his mother offered to our mother her son to become a priest. Third, God can work with and through unknown, undistinguished, unimportant people who are notable in the genealogy, Abiod and Zadok. Nothing is known about them, but without them, Jesus would not have descended. We may feel we are nobodies and mediocre compared to others, but God can use us as He did all of these obscure and for some sinful people. We may be a product of a sinful past, but God's grace allows us to be redeemed and to be used for His purpose, especially if we love Him. Today's alternative first reading says, All things work for the good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Let us not give up on people easily as God does not on us. Let us not discriminate, but welcome people into our lives, especially the difficult ones, for they can be God's instrument of change, helping us in our journey on the road to holiness. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, help me to see you in others, and help others to see you in me. Mama Mary, please intercede for me. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.